Hi guys, this is Kobe speaking and um, today we're going to talk about how to model something similar to a hamster slash mouse slash rat and uh, I'm going to show you guys how to model this inside of Maya and also make use of the modeling toolkit and some other tools inside of Maya uh, to go through this process. Okay, so first things first, I've gathered some, some reference for you guys uh, to have a look at and um, I'm going to go through each of these as we go along through the steps um, depending on what I'm modeling at that point in time. So I've already made a project for us um, and this project um, includes the reference and I will add the, the actual project as a final scene file for you guys to, to take home, to look at and actually study how I approached it and also keep the history um, throughout the modeling process so that you guys can actually go through the stack in the history and then look at how um, and which tools I've used to, to get to this point. So at this point it's a blank canvas, very simple. Um, I'm going to talk about the grid setup that I have at this point. I, in, I prefer using a physical world scale kind of setup and what I've done is if you look under the display under the options box it's going to give you this little box window and um, the default settings if I'm not mistaken sit to to 12 it's, it's actually do that it reset settings 12 5 and 5 and this is really not um, something that is workable for us in in the sense of real life real world scale kind of units so I prefer setting the length and width to a thousand and this refers to a thousand units uh, for essentially 10 meters and then I'm going to divide it up by 10 once again and this is going to be my um, 10 tick marks uh, each dividing into one meter and then for each meter I'm going to going to divide it into um, one centimeter units um, I've also decided to choose uh, two very or two th or three different gray values to indicate the color variation otherwise it's really just going to be overkill if we jump to very bright colors I'm going to stick to the pretty clean gray values I'm going to hit apply and as you can see if we look at the grid uh, I'm going to open up the options again um, we have a very very large kind of grid at this point and um, oh wait I made a mistake there the grid line should be a hundred and then the subdivision should, should be 10 there we go that is much much better great so if you look at the the grid from the center all the way to the end we essentially have 10 units or 10 meter cubes going all the way to there and then for each meter I've divided uh, it up into 10 um, into 10 centimeters and that's going to give me equal to, to one meter box so quickly and easily I can then make a judgment call if an object is within scale or not that's it for this <coughs> window I'm going to go from here I'm also going to turn on the modeling toolkit the modeling toolkit inside of Maya 2014 as well as Maya 2015 you will find it here in the top right corner next to all the other tool settings if you click on this it's going to turn on the modeling toolkit or at least open it up and then we have to make sure we check it on as soon as you check this uh, on off button you have access to all the tools inside of the modeling toolkit I'm going to try and stay very basic with this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can block out a very primitive like type of character I'm not going to go in all details I expect you guys to take the process from there and just uh, um, add all the details that you were going for this process is going to rely on box modeling um, I'm not going to teach any edge modeling at this point I'm going to start off with a cube and I'm going to drag the cube out approximately let's say about mm, yeah four centimeters uh, yeah I'm gonna drag it out and that's gonna be my cube slash box if you prefer having a one 
scale box set up automatically from the start then it's a good idea to actually go to the polygon primitives and make sure the interactive creation is turned off this way if it's unchecked you can click on the box and instantly a one unit size box will be placed right in the center so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this guy up we can scale it up using the scale tool oh, and that's easily accessible using the the uh, R key on the keyboard or you can click on this icon in the left side of the, the toolbox another way you can scale it is you can open up the channel box if you hit control A once, control A twice and you see channel box you can have access to the scale from here as well once you click on the name and click and drag so on these attributes then I can do a middle mouse click and drag and that's going to give me an interactive scale so that I can tweak it on the fly once again another method of approaching it is you can go to polygon cubes and you can increase the width height and depth from there so I'm going to start off with about a four centimeter unit size so I'm going to type in four in the width height and scale and I'm going to start off with that as my base for my character now you're asking me how are we gonna get this box to look like a character well <laughs> essentially we start off with a, a few very simple tools and that I'm quickly going to show you guys and you'll very quickly see that through this um, very minimal set of tools you can really easily get to something that looks like a character so first things first I'm gonna jump to the polygons submenu set here at the top and that's going to allow me to have access to all the modeling tools under the mesh menu under the edit, edit menu and then mesh tools just a quick note the mesh tools these tools you'll find underneath the modeling toolkit as well it's most of them are here and then there's some of the old stuff um, in here as well um, many of the tools inside of my 2015 has been moved uh, moved from the edit mesh menu into the mesh tools and um, just for simplicity's sake and the nice thing is they've divided it up into categories nonetheless even if you have 2014 just make sure that when I talk about a specific tool and you can't find it I can't find the mesh tools menu just go into the edit mesh and you'll most probably find it there okay great so we're going to talk about the extrude tool I'm going to talk about the insert edge loop tool and uh, maybe one or two others for now. Um, the default insert edge loop tool we will find under the mesh tools and uh, there we go that's an insert edge loop tool. Uh, if you guys prefer actually making some sort of tab with all the most often used tools by all means you guys can do that. If you're not sure how to do that um, you can create a custom shelf at, at the top and then this shelf will then store all your default tools so just to kind of give you guys a little um, explanation on, on how to create one if you go here to the menu you can go to create new shelf give it a name like uh, Cobus tools I'm gonna hit OK and I've got a clean slate that I can store all my new tools inside I'm gonna go to mesh tools this time and I'm going to pick the ones that I would like to use most often. I'm going to hold down Control and Shift. I'm going to click on Insert Edge Loop Tool. That's going to store it inside my shelf. I'm also going to use the Extrude Tool. And mm, let's see. If there's any other ones that I, I'm going to use, I will go through them and almost probably just add them to the shelf as we go along. Great. So first things first I'm gonna right click on this object I'm gonna go to face mode that's gonna allow me to manipulate the model in component mode I'm gonna select the top face and we, we're going to divide this this character into three halves it's gonna be the bottom half of the body the center half and then essentially the head so with that selected I'm gonna hit extrude and as soon as you click extrude it, it goes into the extrude tool 
that inside of the toolkit this will then instantly allow us to then left click and drag and add a single face and you'll see here at the top it says the actual distance that um, you've created it from one point to another um, this tool actually has three states or three modes that you can work with um, you can actually see all those features down here at the bottom face extrude options so if we're looking here it's kind of currently set to the local Z which means it's actually going up and down along the Z axis um, of the normal and then it has options for adding extra divisions along this new extrude or even offsetting it and this is quickly and easily switchable just by clicking on it so with the offset I'm gonna slightly squeeze it in a bit and then right off the, after that I'm gonna hit extrude once that's gonna exit out of the tool and initiate the um, the pro process after that I'm gonna hit extrude once again and you'll notice that the first extrude that we did took its information and kept it inside of the the options so the next time I add an extrude it's actually going to apply the distance for me without me having to retype it in or remember the value so that's a kind of a neat trick for us to to work with Great, so it's three divisions. I'm going to do a bit of refinement just to kind of shape it out a bit. And then after that, uh, we can add some extra details like arms and legs and so on. I'm going to right click, go to vertex mode, and do a click and drag over this. And I'm going to start rotating this and maybe kind of moving it to the side. And uh, I'm going to grab all of these to do the same kind of thing kind of tilt it up forward something like that still you're asking me how is this going to turn into a character well just keep watching I will show you don't worry right so I've got a very basic primitive block out for the body remember this is a hamster so it's probably going to be a little fat type of character so I'm definitely going to scale the base up quite a lot and after that I'm going to uh, start pinching the bottom half in something like that and I'm going to use the insert edge loop tool now to define the center line for the actual character so I'm going to go to the insert edge loop tool and um, I'm going to explain how the insert edge loop tool works and then I'm going to show you guys a much better tool a tool that is called multi-cut which is a combination of many tools um, and I would prefer you guys actually using the multi-cut simply because of its simplicity and its ease of use without needing to jump between different tools so the insert edge loop tool once you click on it it goes into the mode you can then click and drag uh, on any edge that you want to essentially cut through the the length and then what's going to happen is it's going to run along each edge or each ad adjacent edge and trying to essentially cut it up in half um, you'll see it loops all the way around and that's a neat, a neat trick about this thing um, as long as you have quads all over your model it's going to keep on cutting along that length of the the edges until it hits maybe a triangle or some sort of end gone or five-sided or six-sided face polygon right so this is one way of approaching it so I'm gonna quickly undo this and actually show you guys how we can use the multi-cut so as soon as you click on the multi-cut if you hover over it in fact it says tool to cut slice and insert edge loop uh, on the polygons so if I click on it it's kind of an interesting mode it allows us to cut the model up based on whichever edge I want to pick okay it also allows me to cut in the center of a face and also constrain to a vertex so that's pretty cool um, so essentially it replicates exactly what the the old um, split polygon tool was doing if I can find it split mesh uh, the new modeling tool 
Kid in my is by far much, much better than trying to jump to menus here at the top. I'm trying to find it now. And, um, uh, yeah, well, it doesn't matter too much. I'm going to jump back and just uh, remove what I've done so far and actually show you guys how we can uh, act or make, have this multi cut tool act like the the insert edge loop tool. So if you hold down control, you can see it kind of mimics exactly what the insert edge loop tool is doing. Um, and the cool thing is, if I hold down control and shift, it's actually making use of this thing called called snap steps. So it's actually set to 10% increments. So if I hold down control and shift, it's actually jumping a certain incremental step throughout the length of this. So if I want this dead center, I literally move to the center line and um, just click once and it's going to divide up the model in half. Great, so I've got this. I've got it divided up in half. Why did I do this? Well, first of all, I established two, two halves, two center, um, uh, two sides of the model that's divided by the center line. And what this will allow me to do now is essentially have access to the symmetry features inside of the modeling toolkit. So I'm going to pick one of the edges along the center line. I'm going to hit symmetry. As soon as I do that, you'll instantly see that um, I can manipulate two halves all at the same time. So if I were adding an extra arm or a leg or an ear or something on the one side of the model and I wanted to replicate on the other half, it's going to do it instantly without me needing to to uh, delete the one half and then mirror this across th through uh, duplicates and then minus X on the scale and then eventually combine it again and then and only then doing some sort of merge vertex. So I'm actually disregarding all of the old methods and I'm making use of the symmetry tool which is by far a lot faster and a lot easier. Great, so I've got it turned on. So I'm going to go and actually start um, tweaking some of these features. I'm going to go to vertex mode. Um, you'll see if you do a right click here on your model you've got a context menu which allows you to go to different component modes you have the same thing inside of the modeling toolkit. Edges is here, vertices, and then faces. You can also see that it tells you how many edges or components you have selected of that specific type. Up here at the top, if you click on multi-component, it actually turns them all on. So I can either select face, edge, or vertex just by literally hovering over it. Uh, sometimes this is very useful. Uh, many times I only make use of one single component mode at a time. Okay, great. So I've got it selected. And now, as I tweak this, instantly you'll realize that um, I can shape, shape up the model and give it some definition. So I'm going to quickly go through some of this, refine it a bit until I'm happy. And then once I've, I've got the, the basic block out, um, I'll add maybe some extra definition and so on. So here at the top, definitely want to thin it out. Bring it back maybe over here. Okay, great. So now we're getting some volume, some more organic like shapes. Great. Um, at the bottom, I'm going to add the legs. Um, I'm going to add the legs from the side and not from the bottom. Uh, this for the simple reason that um, I want to have a bit more space for for the hips um, to be divided by the center line. Um, so I'm going to leave this uh, space or gap for the, I would say, crutch area and um, just give it the character some, some pretty wide thighs. Uh, as, as you know, this is a hamster there. They're pretty fat, They're little fluffy creatures. So with a face selected, and I'm going to hit extrude and then instantly I have some extra details that I can go and refine. So what I'm going to do is actually go into the rotate tool and start rotating this inwards and um, pull this down and then scale it in like this. This way I'm actually giving the body some some the legs some space 
to get extruded out of. I'm going to do another extrude. I'm going to bring this out. I'm going to refine this a bit more. I'm going to use the scale tool to flatten the bottom half. Okay, something like that. And I'm going to do some, some refinement again. Select some components. Get them closer. Grab these guys. Same kind of thing. Okay. Bring this down maybe over here. I'm slowly, slowly adding some, some volume to the base of the body. At the back, I want to widen his his bum. And uh, the crotch area, I'm going to pinch that inwards. And I'm going to grab these vertices and pull them down and forward. Hey, there we go. That's looking much, much better. Great. So <laughs> his butt is quite wide and high up there. So I'm going to bring this down as well. Great. Now this is slowly getting to look like some sort of a uh, some something. We're not there yet. <laughs> right. So I've got that. I'm going to use the multi cut to divide the model up in half again. So I'm just holding down control, clicking, and I'm going to keep on refining this. Re rotate, um, scale, and then move component mode. That's all I'm using at this point. Nothing special. Keep on refining, keep on refining. Something like that. Okay, I'm going to leave this vertex down here at the bottom because I'm e eventually going to add a little tail from this vertex coming out. Just a little stump that we can refine later. Great. Now I'm going to bring this maybe forward, give him some nice fat belly. Um, if you guys are not familiar with the, the, the um, actual move tool, the move tool works this way. We've got um, uh, the new modeling toolkit move tool rather has these extra circles that allow you to constrain two different axes uh, and then move only along those two axes without maybe breaking the third axis. So whichever one you're going to, going to click on, that's going to allow you to constrain a single one and then only move in two different directions depending on which one you're taking. Great. Um, so I'm going to quickly rush through this. Uh, process. Um, I'm pretty much using the same tools over and over and over. Extrude, insert, edge, loop, multi-cut. Extrude, insert, edge, multi-cut. And then just kind of re readjusting the components until I'm happy with the results. Right, so I'm going to add some arms. Have that selected. Do an extrude. Bring this in a bit. I'm going to refine the arms. Put it in. Do another extrude. Okay, rotate this out, bring it down, bring it forward, rotate it this way, scale it down, okay, and slowly we're getting some arms, something that looks like arms. Okay, let's refine this more. Good. Right, gonna do one single extrude again. Um, I'm going to bring the offset back again, bring it out, and I'm eventually going to add the, the hands to that. Great. I'm going to add some multi cuts down here to refine the shape a bit. Double clicking on an edge loop that will quickly loop the whole selection if you guys are not familiar with that. Here we go. I'm going to give him some slightly wider shoulders. And then here at the top, I'm just going to take this face selection and then start rotating it a bit more forward and down. Yep, that's good. I'm going to do another extrude, wide extrude forward. Bring it down maybe, rotate it forward a bit more that. Great. Uh, so a lot of times when I'm scaling and I'm finding myself 
not wanting to use the modeling tool kit scale you can always turn off one of this uh, one of the the on off switch and then go to the traditional scale tool which will then give me uh, a much much different type of scale scale tool it gives me the the old methods of, of scaling and uh, you can also obviously tweak the tool settings by double clicking on any of these uh, move rotate or scale features the way you can access the the scale axes object world or local and of course you can also turn on the soft selection if you were going to use it so I'm closing that and I'm just continuing with uh, my modeling process right so there we go I'm gonna do another extrude bring this forward I've used a different extrude method than the clicking down here at the bottom or using this one over here essentially what it looks is if you hold down shift and you're doing a right click you have access to the component uh, mode that you have currently selected and all its tools for for it so I'm using the extrude face mode which will then allow me to do an interactive offset here thickness and divisions all at the same time so if you you can then click here and slide these values sometimes they're very large jumping incremental values so what I tend to do is hold down control and click inside here that's going to give me a much much smaller incremental tweak option okay great so I've got that I'm going to jump back to the normal move tool maybe bring this down I'm going to keep on refining this guy bring this down bring this down this down okay bring this up like that widening out this base there we go great so what I'm going to do next is actually define uh, um, a center line through the side of the body and that's going to allow me to have instead of just the the eight uh, four-sided polygon I'm go actually going to end up with an eight-sided polygon that I can then eventually attach the arms and hands so that's what I want to want to go for so first things first I'm going to go to multi-cut hold down control and then pick my center line somewhere around there boom so I've got a center line and I'm going to keep on refining it so now I'm going to introduce you guys to another very very cool feature about the modeling toolkit if you want to tweak components many people actually tend to select a component and then move it the modeling toolkit is derived from an uh, older plugin um, called uh, uh, or the software is is DRaster and they're actually making uh, a modeling toolkit on there uh, by themselves and um, so a lot of the features um, was transferred from this into to Maya so you don't always have to have a component selected all you have to do is literally hover over it and then middle mouse clicking and then depending on the, the transform options that you don't have here down here you have Z axes Y axes or Z X axes if you click on this one this slab or bar in the middle it's actually going to turn them all on so that there is no constraints at all so I can essentially now adjust the components on the fly without me needing to to uh, to select a component and then using the move tool features so that's that's very very handy indeed um, so I can quickly adjust any of these components on the fly uh, another feature that I want to quickly introduce you guys to is um, actually selecting a component and then sliding it along the surface especially when you you're happy with the curvature of the surface but you do not want to break that curvature you just want to slide an edge or vertex along that component all you have to do is select it hold down control and shift and that's going to allow us to now slide it along that surface without actually distorting the shape uh, it's just moving that vertex or component along the surface normal uh, so that's very very useful you can also actually push along that normal um, so if you hold on just control and your middle mouse clicking you're actually pushing along that axis so that's very very useful so I'm going to use that to round out some of these features at any point throughout the process I like to refine the shapes before I do any adjustment 
or add any extra details rather. I'm going to keep on tweaking these components. I want to round it out as much as possible before I go to the next step. Why? Why do I do this? Well, essentially, if you leave the components in, in their default state um, and not move them before you add the next bit of detail, at some point you're going to realize, oh my goodness, the shape has so many triangles or polygons or n-gons or any extra detail and uh, the shape is not there yet I, I I'm really struggling to define the the actual character or the the shape and um, that's because um, it's it's better to go through a progressive refinement process than trying to refine the details at the end of, of the process and it's much less work and much less um, struggling or trying to to figure out exactly what you want to achieve. Okay, so I'm tweaking these values and I'm rounding out the shape as much as possible. Okay, great. So I've got it slowly getting there. We're definitely, definitely getting there. Uh, down here at the bottom, uh, we still haven't defined the feet. So I'm going to select the bottom faces and I'm actually going to delete it, which is going to give me something uh, to work with um, or actually attach the feet and we're also going to do the same thing to the hands so with the the um, edge loops um, open at the bottom I can I'm gonna quickly scale them down to make them completely flat boom so I literally just scale this down all the way to the bottom if you don't have this if you don't have the feature of scaling it to the center and then stopping in the middle and it keeps on going past that point it's because you might not be using the modeling toolkits um, scale tool uh, you might be using the default Maya scale tool and this actually allows you to scale past the point of uh, the center line um, so if you have this just make sure that you scale all the way to the center and then maybe do it one more time and just for in case add another one great now at that point you know it's perfectly center but if you're using the modeling toolkits scale tool it's by far much easier it's literally just a click and drag and it's gonna always go and snap to the to the dead center on the zero right so I've got that selected I'm gonna leave the hands for now I'm just gonna work on the legs for a bit I've got that selected Gonna go to move tool and actually show you one method of extruding, uh, not by face but rather by edge. So the modeling toolkit has this very interactive way of of extruding. If you have the component selected, if you hold down shift at the same time and you're you're clicking and dragging, it's actually going to allow us to to extrude this edge on the fly. So if you hover over any of your your um, arrows. It's actually going to tell you extrude. So essentially, it's a, an old method stolen from the Max days, from 3D Studio Max, and um, this is by far much much faster to to extrude this way than in in um, going through menus or clicking buttons just to have access to those features. So definitely make use of this feature. Um, I I love it, and I definitely suggest you guys uh, make use of it so refine 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 keep adding some extra features gonna thin this out a bit there we go double click here maybe slide this up more up to the top like that great and um, now we're gonna start changing the curvature angle going to do another extrude forward and I'm going to flatten this out there we go and slowly we're getting little feet <laughs> right we'll do another extrude maybe and uh, scale that in a bit and for now I'm going to leave it there we'll get back to that again as I said in the beginning of the tutorial I'm not going to go all out add every possible detail I'm just giving you guys a quick way of blocking out your volumes and then you can guys can gradually go and add all the details that you want so I've 
added another edge loop down here in the center using multi cuts. I'm going to use a scale along normal to push out the volume and start giving it some some fattiness. Great. Back to uh, let's keep on working on the head for now. Um, I'm going to define an area where I'm going to extrude the eye. So I'm going to add another insert edge loop and this is going to give me a nice face that I can select on both sides and then doing a quick extrude on to kind of create the socket for the eye and I'm going to maybe rotate this like that and from the top I'm going to rotate it like that great again I'm going to do another extrude this time I'm going to push into the eye socket and maybe scale using offset maybe get to to there great so now I've got a socket for the eye and uh, it's going to allow me to refine the shape later on right so mouth what do we do with the mouth this is um, usually a problematic area for most people so I'm going to show you guys my method which is pretty simple and it's very very useful I'm going to define an area of the mouth um, that's going to go pretty much up to around here so I'm going to add an edge loop oops, sorry, up to there and I'm going to just bring these guys a bit forward something like that pinch this in give the guy a bit of a nose before we get into the mouth tweak this in Great. Now we're getting there. Sweet. So if you look at this edge, it goes up to over here. Um, we want to define that as a mouth. So there's two ways of, uh, of going about it. You can either approach it where you actually split the components into two halves and then um, just filling in the mouth. Or you can do a bevel on the selected edges and that way delete the center faces that was created with the bevel so I'm going to go th with the first mode because it's slightly simpler um, but it might not make sense from the start so with the the components selected um, I'm going to go with the, the menu way just to kind of show you guys where the tool set is and how to go about it and then afterwards I will show you the the shortcut way so I think under the uh, the mesh tools um, let me find it. It's called the detached component. So let's see. There's vertex, there's edge. So it's on the edge mode. We're currently working with edges. And uh, there we go, detach. So once you click on it, it's actually going to separate the top from the bottom, but leave the edges stacked right on top of each other. So that's um, where most people think, like, oh, nothing happened. Uh, it definitely happened. All you have to do is actually separate the faces from each other, and that way you've got a little open mouth that we can kind of use. Great, so I've got that, divided it up. I'm going to select the, the faces on the or the edges at the top. Shift double click on the bottom edge to add that as a selection, and um, then we can do some extrudes on it as well. So I'm going to undo all of this and actually show you guys how we can use the, the quick uh, shortcuts on the keyboard to do the exact same thing with a hold down shift with the edges selected I'm going to do a shift right click and then say detach component it's exactly the same as going here and say detach so with that selected I'm going to separate it again open it up and then uh, have these guys selected I'm going to do an extrude edge and I'm going to pull in to create the inner side of the mouth. So this selected, maybe pull that in a bit more, pull in a bit more. Great, now we're slowly getting there. Bring this in. Okay, double click on the edge loop again. I'm going to do another extrude. At this time, I'm going to push up. This way, I'm actually creating an inner side cavity for the mouth which will later give me a much much uh, 
needed information to define the inner side of the mouth. Great. So I've got that blocked out. I'm going to add a bit of a extra extrude on the tip of the nose just for the sake of defining the snout. Okay, a bit more. There we go. There we go. That's good. I'm liking that. And um, I'm going to leave it there for now. So the next uh, part that I'm going to focus on is actually the ears. The ears uh, could potentially be a problem but not always. It depends on how we approach it. I'm going to show you my method. Uh, there's many methods. My method is not just, it's not the perfect method. method. It's not uh, the best method. And by no means is it the only method. So with this edge selected, or rather vertex selected, I'm going to do some sort of vertex chamfer. So if you haven't heard of it, it's uh, a technique that essentially divides the, the vertex into um, a four-sided polygon, and then um, all the polygons around it will then turn into an n-gon. Uh, but we can easily fix that um, after the fact. So I've got that selection, and I'm going to manipulate it just now. Okay, so so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to chamfer it. I'm going to hold down Shift and I'm going to do a right click on it, and you'll see that uh, the menu that I have now is a context menu dedicated to the component that I have selected again, and this time it is vertex mode. So essentially, I've got all the tools that will allow me to manipulate the vertex, and one of them being the chamfer component. So. I've accessed this menu by doing a shift, right click, and then chamfer vertex. The same type of tools you will find under the mesh tools as well as the edit mesh options. So this is a vertex component mode tool. And um, there we go, that's that's the chamfer that I was referring to. Shift, right click, chamfer, and you'll instantly see it divides the head or that specific vertex into four sides. That I can go and then refine a bit until I'm happy with the result, and that I can actually extrude the ear out of that. Okay, great. So I've got the face selected. I'm going to use a multi cut. Whoops. There we go. Multi cut. I'm going to cut through here at the back. Just make sure it's all <coughs> quads again. Cut down there. And uh, we can just uh, continue with this all the way down. There you go. Perfect. It's got a lot of details down here at the bottom that I can refine later. So everything is quads again, just like um, I want. And I'm just going to keep on refining the shape of the head more and more. Great. So with the face selected on the ears, I'm going to do a face extrusion. I'm going to do a quick pull up on this, kind of give it an offset, make it nice and wide. But I definitely don't, do not want it to be that thick. So what I'm going to do is go to, let's say, vertex or edge mode. I'm going to select these edges and I'm going to bring them closer to each other. So I'm going to flatten out the ear and then later on I'll add a bit of curvature. So vertex mode, maybe select this guy, refine it, bring it forward. There we go. I'm gonna go to multi cut, divide it in half, grab some components and tweak the shape. Most important thing, tweak the shape. Great. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is instead of having this edge loop running down the, the bottom of the, the, the head, I have enough detail and I would rather have detail going through the center of the eye, going around the nostril, and this way it's going to allow me to you know, refine the, the eye, refine the snout, and all those. I'd rather have the edges flowing in, in an area where I need the details than in an area that's really uh, overly cluttered with 
uh, detail. When I say detail, I'm, I'm talking about the amount of, of edge um, edges that I can tweak. So how are we going to go about this? If I do an edge and I double cl uh, click on the edge, I'm going to do a delete edge mode. So if you hold down shift, right click, delete edge, um, it's going to get rid of the edge as well as the vertices that uh, was initially attached to it. And then I'm essentially going to redirect the components to go through through the the um, snout and the eyes. I'm going to hit uh, make the multi cuts, and then I'm going to choose where I want to define it. And then from here on, I'm going to choose this edge to cut through there. Great. So there, there, at the back, over here and done um, I have an end gun that we can sort out that's uh, quick and easy to fix um, but I'm gonna leave it as is for now uh, I might not even get rid of it because I'm, we're going to smooth it out and then the smooth usually fixes most of the problems for us so now I have enough um, detail around the eyes to go and refine the, the socket of the eye to look a bit more rounder. So that's definitely an advantage for us to, to work with. I'm going to keep on refining that. Bring this in maybe. Bring this in maybe. There we go. Now we're getting a socket for the eye. Bring this out. These guys are going to have them selected and then push out along the normal just to refine it a bit more. Hey, slowly, slowly getting there. The hamster is a fat little guy, but um, this one looks more like a rat at this point. Um, so, only once we've, we've added the smooth, I'm going to go in and um, just kind of uh, bulk it up and give it some more roundness. Um, so let's have a look. What am I going to tweak down here? I'm definitely going to bring this out. Widen this. Essentially, this is the, the process that I take. Um, we started off with three extrudes, one for the bottom of the body, top half of the body, and then the head. It's very simple, very small amount of tools that I'm using. And um, I'm really gaining a lot of advantage by uh, uh, going through this process um, instead of actually using an edge modeling technique where I might be taking a lot more time. So I'm having a bit of problems with my, uh, my symmetry tool that's currently not working and that's typical of when we're actually um, doing some sort of a um, end gone um, extrusion and then suddenly the tool doesn't work like I expected but um, that's qu uh, quickly fixable um, as long as we make everything quads again so I've added this edge loop and you can see and it doesn't cut all the way through the center of the body so how do we fix this well um, if you go to multi cut um, I can definitely see that this vertex over here uh, can either go all the way around and then connect back to itself or what I can do is actually connect it to this side of the ear which will definitely assist me in uh, making everything quads again so bottom edge loop top edge loop flows straight into the ear and now if I select an edge on the symmetry line and I click on symmetry again it's back to initiated uh, for, for me to go and refine and tweak again so that was a quick fix for, for this issue. If you ever run into that issue, make sure that you tweak your, your, your components so that everything is back to, to quads, uh, then the symmetry line will be established again for us to go and refine the, the model. Great, so the inside of the ear, I'm going to do a quick face selection. Um, there's a few ways of approaching it. Um, it's a very simple thing, I mean, we can do a shift click 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 and we've got the selection but you also have the the modeling toolkit way of approaching it which essentially works this way 
If you click on a component, if you hold down tab, as long as the modeling toolkit is active, if you hold on tab, it goes into, you'll definitely see your mouse cursor changes, your, your manipulated changes, it disappears in fact, and also some of these options down here will turn on and off. So, so what that means is it's currently set to drag mode, so I can literally click and drag and that's going to allow me to select the component. So that's definitely a lot faster than trying to tr click, hold down shift and control and then add to the selection as we go through the process. And it's camera based selected as well, so that's going to allow me to constrain it to only what the camera is viewing. So with that selected, I'm going to do shift extrude face and then I'm going to use the offset to pull in and I'm going to maybe push in a bit more or maybe out and then in another extrude offset and then inwards there we go, now we're getting there great okay, so their ears aren't really that round I'm definitely going to make it more pointy like something like that there we go I'm going to add another edge, uh, edge insert and then keep refining every process, refine, refine, refine and get really sick of me saying that <laughs> so it's just one of those things you have to consider as um, that's going to allow us to refine the shape enough right so I'm going to push this out a bit just to run out the back of the ears and bring this in it's going too far there we go this is going too wide there we go more more right so I'm actually going to leave it here up to this point just because I want you guys to go and explore other possibilities of adding extra details. I do not want to go through the full process and have you guys uh, literally just copy everything that I'm doing. So for now, I think this is good enough. And I hope you guys learned something through this experience. And um, I'll definitely see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.